Okay, so one of the things uh, that we talked about before in a previous uh, exercise is dealing with images is how to make uh, images and how to scale images and so forth. One of the things that we didn't discuss though is how to create SVG images. Those are web vector graphics. Um, a vector is basically line art versus raster graphics, which is pixel based. Um, and so with pixel based stuff, you are limited to whatever your size is, uh, your original document size. And if you try to make the picture bigger than that, then it, the image will start to break down. Well, with vector, basically line art, it uses mathematical calculations to draw the lines and the, the geometry and so forth. And so those typically can scale a lot better uh, for the web and the file size is always a lot smaller. So um, for the header, uh, and any other kinds of images, you can also go ahead and do the way that you know how to use Photoshop if you don't have Illustrator. Uh, but if you have Illustrator, like if you have the Creative Cloud or um, you have access to Illustrator, I just want to show you a way that you can create um, a web vector graphic or an SVG. So I'm going to go open Illustrator, and this is the Creative Cloud version, and I'm going to say File, New. And I'm just going to create something that's about, I don't know, 1,280 pixels wide by 300. And this can change later, but this will give me a good starting place. Say OK. And I want to create a title that is text-based that will scale. Maybe it has like some vector shape uh, of color near it. But anyway, so what I want to do is I'm going to take my type tool right here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, just create a, a something so I can start typing and you notice that the stuff up here changed um, and it gave me you know like the type of uh, font that I could choose from and so forth I'm just gonna go ahead and start typing and I'm gonna type the name of what I want to call my website and I think I'll call it everything relative I don't know catchy uh, and so I'm gonna change that first of all I'm not gonna change the font I'm going to change the font size so I can see it better. It needs to be a lot bigger. So I'm goes up to 72. Well, that's still kind of small. So I'm going to say maybe I'm going to type it in and type in 150. And that's a little bit better. And now if I want to move it, what I can do is instead of the type tool, I want to choose this black arrow tool. That's my move tool in Illustrator. And I can sort of place it, sort of center it a little bit better on the page. And if I want to nudge it, without having to grab it and click and drag and move it. I can use my arrow keys to nudge it left or nudge it right. And that looks pretty close to centered uh, side to side. And if I want it to be truly centered, ah, that looks pretty good. And I can click off of it and make sure that I'm still okay with that. So, uh, and then if I wanna go back and edit this again, I can select my type tool and then I can double click it triple click it, it'll select the whole thing. And I let's say that I don't want Myriad Pro to be my uh, font. Let's say that I want to choose something, I don't know, a little bit different. Um, I think I want to try this one. Okay, let's just say that I like this typeface. Um, now, uh, if <clears throat> I can leave it that way, uh, the other thing I can do is, let's say that I want like a block of color behind it or something. Well, I can go over here to this rectangle tool in the toolbar. And while I have it selected, I'm gonna go down here to the foreground color. And I'm gonna double click that. And it opens up this uh, color picker for me. I'm gonna choose sort of like a bright red. I could also choose something that's like maybe orange. Maybe it's not bright red. Let's move into an orange range. Somewhere in there, like a red orange kind of. Okay, and then I'm going to draw a box here where it says relative. I'm going to kind of draw a box around that and it's going to cover up the word relative. Well, if I want to send that back behind the word relative, what I can do is I can, while, it, while the object is selected, so see it's highlighted in blue, I can go up here and I can say object, a range, and then I can say send to back. And it sends it to the very back in the stacking order of, of the objects. So it doesn't look quite centered, so I'm gonna kind of nudge it with my arrow while I've got my move tool selected, see here. All right, and that, that looks 
that looks reasonable. Um, maybe I'm trying to get the space even here, and so that might need to, that's about right, I think. Okay, so if I click off of it, I can take a better look at it. And if I want, I can also drag this side in just a hair, and then that looks pretty, pretty darn close, or uh, maybe. All right, let's drag it in just a little bit more. Okay, so now that I've got that selected, I don't think I like the black on orange. I can go back to my type tool, and I can double click just the word relative, and I'm gonna change the color of it up here where it says characters, and I've got this color box. I'm gonna change it to pure white, okay? And I can click off of it, and now I've got this everything relative. And let's say that I want the word everything not to be in black, okay? I can do the same thing, go back to my type tool, and I can experiment by uh, making that a different color. Let's say that we want it to be, and by the way, I don't have to pick from these colors, I can pick from other colors, but let's just see what happens when we make it sort of a gray uh, color. And, oops, let's click off of that. That doesn't look too bad. I'm wondering though how it would look if it were like a blue color. So let's go and let's go ahead and maybe pick, uh, well the other thing I can do too, if I don't want to pick that, I can double click down here in my foreground and I get a better color picker. So I'm going to pick sort of the most vibrant blue, but then I'm going to come down and I'm going to come in a sort of a, this, this range of blue. And maybe I'm not going to make it purely saturated. And let's just see, maybe this will look okay on top of a white background and click off of it and so there. I think I like that. And uh, so if I want to make this a scalable SVG graphic, I think I want to limit the size so that I don't have this extra white space up here. Um, and by the way, if you had wanted to put, you know, like circles and things like that in it, you could have clicked on this uh, uh, rectangle and you could choose the ellipse tool and to draw a circle, you basically just draw like this and see how it's making the shape uh, with uh, the vector line. If I hold down my option key, it'll draw from the center, all right? But if I hold down my shift key, it'll constrain it to be a perfect circle. And then I could just, you know, have my perfect circle just like that. So anyway, if I wanted to have, you know, a circle, let's say even behind the E, I don't know that I really want to do this. I could do something like have my circle here. Let's make it, uh, let's send it to the back. Actually, let's make it a, a, a different color. Um, let's make it sort of like a green color. And we'll send the object to the back. So now it's behind the E and the V. It's very hard to see because, you know, the, the contrast isn't very good. So maybe this is where I would want that to be maybe a dark gray after all or something. And that's a little bit easier to see. So if I want to make the circle smaller, I could click this corner and hold the shift key down and it'll constrain it. And if I want it to not get smaller up in the corner, I can hold, uh, well, yeah, let's just do that. And then we can move it, not like that. We'll move the object you know, behind this E, and then I can use my nudge tools. So if you wanted, for instance, like the E to have a circle around it, you could also change the kerning uh, between these letters. And But I don't want that. I just wanted to show you how to make a circle. So if you want to just do something really simple, I'm not, this isn't an illustrator class, so I just want to show you how you can get some simple text that will scale properly as an SVG. Now, I said before I want to get rid of this white space above and below. I'm going to go over here where it looks like a little grid icon, and it's called the Artboard tool. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to set the or define the actual document size that's going to get saved out. I'm going to drag these little corners in, and fortunately they're sort of snapping to where I want them to be. And this one, I think I want to leave it right about there. And that looks pretty even. In fact, I want to pull this in just a little bit more, probably to about there. That's a little bit much actually. Okay. All right. Now, if I go ahead and click off of that now, that is my, my artboard. 
And it looks to me like the, the word, relative, everything relative, those words, are a little bit low. So I'm going to select the words and I'm going to nudge them up so that they're more centered. And I think that I'm pretty happy with that. And now if I want to save this as an SVG, all I have to do is go up here to File, and I do Save As. And in my Images folder, uh, let me find the correct Images folder. That's from a different project. I'll go into my uh, Exercise 4 folder, into Images. And I am going to, instead of saving it as an Illustrator file, I'm going to save it as just a regular old SVG, not compressed, just SVG. And we're not going to leave it as untitled. We're going to call it title. Or you could call it, even better, everything dash relative. Do not leave a space in it because it's going to be something used on the web. We'll hit save. You can leave all of these as default. Leave it as image location as embed. And you're, you're good to go. And now we can test it in a browser. So let's go ahead and open a browser up. And I'm just going to move this out of the way for a second. And I'm going to go back to the Finder. Let's go back to my web class folder. And I'll go into my Exercise 4 Images folder. And here I've got my SVG file. Let's get my browser going. And I'm going to just drag this file into a browser to see what it looks like. And this is what it looks like. And I want you to see how if I make it really small, it looks good, and if I make it really big, it looks good, and I can keep making it even bigger and bigger and bigger, and it still looks great. You cannot, you cannot do that with um, with a regular raster graphic like a PNG or a JPEG or a GIF. You can only do this with an SVG in the web, and this is a really nice way to have really lightweight graphics. I mean, look how big this file is. It's only 788 bytes. It's not even one whole kilobyte. It's a very small image. Uh, it's actually technically, uh, because it's a vector-based file. Here, let me close this. Um, I'll leave it open. Uh, because it's a vector-based file, it's really just got mathematics in it. That's it. Okay. So we can use something like this as our title. Uh, and you could also make other icons and other things like this instead of using regular uh, regular pictures, you can use SVG graphics. They're very lightweight, they're very clean, and they scale. Okay, so that's the end of this demonstration, and uh, we'll move on to the next uh, video.